we have our special guest, Joy Bauer. Hello, Joy. Hey, hi, everybody. I see all the little boxes starting to come in. This is cool. I know. It's very exciting. Very full screen. Well, thank you all so much for joining in tonight. Um, we're just going to let everybody come in for like the next couple minutes. But yes, we are super excited to have Joy on our Zoom tonight. Joy, we are so excited to have you. Um, so yeah, I'll just take these next couple minutes to give y'all a rundown of how the Zoom is gonna go, tell you a little bit more about Swerve if you're not familiar, and then I'm just gonna pass the mic to Joy and she's gonna do her thing. So um, just to get started, um, the way what, the way that tonight is gonna go, um, Joy, you're gonna start off with a cocktail recipe. So we are making a delicious mojito tonight, that's right. That's right. We're starting okay. with cocktails because, well, it's five. It's after five in New York. So no oh. matter where all you guys are zooming in, I mean, you know what they say. But I thought, why not start with a cocktail? But I'll also show you how to make a mocktail version of it as well, just in case. Perfect. Yes, because, you know, it's still 430 in New Orleans and like I wouldn't want to get too wild or anything. So mocktails sound wonderful as well. And then we're going to do another recipe which is like a summery 4th of July berry ricotta parfait. That's right? Yes, yes. And I'm gonna show you how to make like the simplest sweetened ricotta cream. Um, I feel like it's gonna be your go-to. It's, it's so simple, but it just takes part skim ricotta cheese to the whole next level. That's awesome. And I okay. think it's not even rival with cream out of the can. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, that's gonna be wonderful. I feel like that's like a staple too, like sweet ricotta cream. I think you could do a lot of different things with that. So very exciting. So we're gonna do those two recipes. And then guys, like I have some questions prepared, but we want this to be as interactive as possible. So, you know, put your questions in the chat. I have my computer right here. So I'm gonna be monitoring the chat. So let us know right now, where are you tuning in from? You know, what's your specialty in your RD space? We'd love to hear that as well. Um, yeah, we're just super curious to know, you know, what are your questions from Joy? Where are you tuning in from? And this will be super conversational. You know, like I said, I have a few questions like I personally am very curious about for Joy, but then, you know, I also want to hear what questions you have from her, for her. So um, yes, yeah, so we got Tara from Indianapolis. Tara. Um, oh, recipe <laughs> development. Okay, so this is great. Um, Amy from Seattle, Bianca from Stanford. Let's see, Diana from Houston. Oh my gosh, so you're getting this hot weather like we're having here. Um, okay, perfect. So um, yeah, everyone keep telling us where you're from, what you want to hear about tonight. Um, I'm going to start it off by introducing Joy. Um, honestly, she needs no introduction, but I'm going to read her bio just to, you know, if you're not familiar with how, with all the amazing, awesome things that she's done, um, I'm going to tell you right now. So this is Joy, Joy Bauer. She is one of the nation's leading health authorities. She is the nutrition and healthy lifestyle expert on the Today Show, of course, and then also the host of NBC's Health and Happiness. Uh, she recently launched her own Amazon Live weekly show, which is super, super fun. Um, and then, and that's called Health, Happiness, and Joy. And she answers question, viewers' questions in real time, which is super valuable and really fun. Um, and then also cooks up mouthwatering recipes, shares her favorite products. And then also Joy is the nutritionist for the New York City Ballet, which is so cool. And she's the creator of joybower.com. Um, she's the number one New York Times bestselling author with 14 different bestselling books, which is incredible. And uh, her latest book, Joy, Joy Bauer Superfood, 150 Recipes for Eternal Youth, features delicious dishes to enhance health, boost energy, and create longevity. So, wow, Joy, that's a lot. We are honored to have you here tonight, to say the least. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, of course. So guys, right before we get into the recipes, I want to tell you a little bit more about Swerve. Um, and then we will go ahead and we'll, we'll kick it off with our um, mojito. But if you're not familiar, Swerve is a natural sugar replacement. Uh, we have 
three different sweeteners available here. We have a granular confectioners and brown swerve. They're all zero calories, all natural ingredients. So the main being erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol that is made by fermenting the glucose from corn. Um, now I know a lot, all of us are RDs here and you may be thinking, oh my gosh, sugar alcohols, but it doesn't cause those digestive issues that some other sugar alcohols have been known to cause. So really great option for anybody that is trying to do some healthier baking, maybe has diabetes, bariatric patients. There's so many different types of people that can benefit from using Swerve. Um, so it's a really great solution to those that still want to have their sweets, but in a healthier way. So we've got the sweeteners. We also have a fabulous line of bake mixes. These are all the different options here. We've got chocolate vanilla cake, chocolate chip cookies. Um, the bake mixes are awesome. And those are actually gonna be made with almond and coconut flour. So they're gluten and grain free. And again, sweetened with swerve. So a better for you, you know, nutrient dense bake mix that you can indulge in without feeling like you're sacrificing anything. So that is the rundown on Swerve. And now Joy, I'm gonna pass it over to you and you're gonna show us you know, a few recipes that you like to make with Swerve. That sounds great. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in and welcome to my kitchen. Um, this is not only my kitchen, but it has basically been my NBC studio for the past, well, almost year. I actually moved midway through COVID. Um, and we were building a new kitchen. So we sort of pivoted and we built it to actually um, film and, and record. And so, um, you know, like you talk about developing skill sets that you never thought you would need. Oh my goodness, my husband has been trained to do the cameras and the lighting and the audio. And I became like the food stylist and the photographer and the chopper. And we are both the food cleaners. <laughs> you know what? my kitchen looks like after a segment i have the show tomorrow morning and like afterwards i should actually take a picture of the hurricane that goes through my kitchen like before what it looks like before and after a segment um it's pretty scary but like anything i mean we're getting better and better and definitely honing our skills um so um i also should tell you guys that Amy sent me this swag, and I thought Amy was going to be wearing her swag as well. <laughs> but, uh, I know. Last time we did it, I had my Swerve shirt on, and now you have the Swerve shirt. Next time we do it, we're just going to coordinate. Yes, and it's absolutely. And also, like, I wanted to do this outside, but it is so sunny and it is so warm in New York right now that um, I couldn't really see the screen that well. So that's why it was supposed to be like this outside summer Zoom, but maybe next time. So I took it in the kitchen. But it's kind of cool for you guys to see also, um, you know, where all the magic happens for NBC. Um, yeah. So, oh, one other thing I have to say is that um, no hair and makeup from NBC for national television for over a year. Could you imagine? Wow. Like, that, that part was a little bit scary because, like, they have high depth. This is Zoom. This is much more forgiving, but, you know, right. whatever. <laughs> Well, Joy, you look amazing. You always look amazing. I never would have known that, you know, you were lacking your professional you, makeup. Looks great. <laughs> and that was before her cocktail. Wow. <laughs> um, and so as you guys probably know, I just want to give a little kudos to Swerve. Um, I am very, very particular with companies that I partner with, that I endorse, and especially when it comes to sugar. You know, I'm always looking for ways. I'm not afraid of sugar at all. And a lot of my recipes, and especially my dessert recipes, do incorporate maple syrup and honey and regular granulated sugar and confectioner sugar, but I'm always looking to pull back. And it's such a big issue for so many people and not just people who have type two diabetes, but people in general. Um, and so, you know, when I first was introduced to Swerve, I, in the spirit of research, I ate my way through absolutely everything. And I tried countless recipes using the different types of actual straight sugar replacement that they have. They have the brown sugar, which is absolutely delicious. Like you guys nailed that in such a big way. There's no aftertaste. It bakes beautifully and it caramelizes. So um, that's a pretty tricky job to master and you've done it. So um, again, like huge accolades for that one and the confectionate sugar and the granular sugar. So um, I just, I'm like really impressed, not only, or I should say equally with the ingredients and the makeup of it, but also the taste that there's no aftertaste. Um, 
And I've tried lots of different ways to cook with it and to use it in non-cook ingredients, in non-cook recipes. So we're going to do non-cook recipes today. I'm going to do one thing with the confection. I'm going to do the other with the granular sugar. Um, and I hope that some of you are cooking along with me. With the Amazon Live, even though I send out the recipes beforehand, I would say about 30% of the people are cooking along with me and the rest just really like to observe and take notes and maybe try it a little bit later. Um, but if you are cooking along, again, like Amy mentioned, this is your Zoom. So ask me questions. You could ask me questions about the recipes, but you could also ask me questions about my career path, about, um, I don't know, my swerve shirt, um, <laughs> my lack of makeup uh, capabilities, anything. Anything goes. This is honestly like your time together. It's it's it feels like an intimate gathering. And even though I know a lot of people are sort of Zoom fatigued, I just love the fact that it's so easy to get together with so many people that you normally mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to. So keep the chats coming, the chat chat function coming, and um, you know jump in and and let us hear from you, please, please. So someone just said I wanted to cook along, but oh Michelle, you wanted to cook along, but. Oh so, oh, so what's happening is with me, my computer is actually too far away. So I'm able to see everything <laughs> on my counter. So I'm just seeing like pop-ups and stuff. Yeah, little pop-ups. I, I should I got stop working down Don't because worry. it's going to be oh, very okay. disruptive. Okay, apologies. Yeah, so it looks like we do have a few people that are cooking along. Ashley, Jenna, they're going to be cooking along with us. Of course, I, I could not miss out on this mojito. So I am ready, Joy. Okay. Just let, let us... Let us know when you are ready. But yes, I will be monitoring the chat. So we have some people cooking and I'm sure we'll get a bunch of wonderful questions as well. So yes, okay. super excited to dig in. Okay, so we're gonna start with um, a raspberry mint mojito. I mean, mo mojitos have mint anyway, but this is like a raspberry spin. And I think you guys are gonna really enjoy this. And again, I'm gonna show you how to do a mocktail or a cocktail version. So. Raspberries are in season right now and you can really get gorgeous plump ones. So this is a half a cup of raspberries is going into the glass. And I love raspberries because they are loaded with anthocyanins, which help enhance cognitive function, as you guys all know. They're also the fruit of choice with the most fiber. So there's eight grams of fiber in a cup of raspberries. I mean, what? That's like incredible for one food, eight grams. And you could tell by all of those little seedlings. Next in line, by the way, would be blackberries. And you could easily make a blackberry mojito doing exactly the same thing. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put my mint leaves in. So I'm putting about eight fresh mint leaves in. And if you're cooking along, your kitchen is now smelling amazing because mm. it just, yeah. it adds that luscious aroma to just about everything. The other cool thing about mint is it's good for your digestion. It helps to dispel gas pockets and obviously it's good for your breath. And so now I'm putting two tablespoons of fresh lime juice. So we're getting some vitamin C in here as well. Okay. Just put that right in. And two tables, is that like half of a lime would you say, do you know? It might be a full lime. And a little, oh. little trick to get more juice out of your lime is you could pop, you could roll it around a little bit to loosen it up, but you could also put it in the microwave for about 15 to 20 seconds and it will soften it. And so you can squeeze a little bit more juice out of it. But, but if you guys are not measuring and you're just squeezing from your lime, I mean, you can't really make a wrong turn here. Just um, afterwards when you taste it, we can go ahead and add a little bit more. And if you feel like you overlined it, you could add a little bit more of the sparkling water. So it's very, very easy to um, pull it back or dial it back up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the swerve. So for this one, I'm using the granular swerve and you have the option of anywhere from one to one and a half teaspoons. So maybe what you would wanna do is start at one teaspoon. This is a half a teaspoon. So I'm gonna put in two. And, um, and then you could always add more a little bit later, but I, I, I kind of feel like one is the sweet spot here. And you take your muddler and you're just gonna crush and muddle and twist. And you can use the back of a spoon too, a wooden spoon if you have one, not even the back. You can use, you know, like the pointy part because you wanna get it down to the glass. And any kind of festive glass will work. Um, I like to use tall, large glasses because it tastes so flipping good. I just want a lot of it. And so we'll put this in here. 
This is like smelling amazing. If yeah. y'all are like, y'all have got to make this and it's so easy. The it's raspberries so really break down so easily. It's so easy. And so now all we're going to do, I mean, you still look, look guys, it, it's already, it's like liquid. And we put this over to the side. And so we're now going to just, it was my rum. Oh, so I'm just going to add, um, a shot of rum, and if you want to make a mocktail, just leave this out. So a shot is one and a half ounces. If you want to keep it a little bit lower than that, one ounce is two tablespoons. So I'm going to eyeball this. That, that seems just about right. Then I'm going to put some ice in here. So I like to put about five ice cubes. Crushed ice would be nice as well. And I'm going to just mix this up. And you just use like a spoon and mix it up. You don't need to put this in a shaker or anything. No. Okay. You know what? I mean, you could use a shaker, but then you have an extra thing to clean. So I'm always right. looking to, to sort of cut back on the um, to clean up afterwards. And then you're just going to top it off with whatever flavored um, sparkling water is your favorite. So I, if you could find a raspberry or a lime, that would be perfect because you're complementing the two flavors that are in there, but it could be really any bit berry flavored and it's gonna fizz up just like this. And again, you stir it around. And I usually like to garnish it with some mint leaves. So what would happen is if you made a mocktail, you would leave out the rum and you would just add in extra sparkling water and you just float some mint leaves on here. And honestly, guys, like, First of all, if you have a get together and you want to serve these, you end up looking like a bartender, like a fancy bartender, right? And you also know that it's light mm -hmm. and it's refreshing and it's not filled with a whole lot of sugar, yet it tastes so indulgent and like something that you got at a fancy bar. The other thing is you could just wow. make it yourself and you could snuggle on the couch or by the pool and read a book or binge watch something on Netflix. <laughs> I just think it's, wow. it's perfect, right? This is awesome, Joy. It's like beautiful. Everyone is saying in the chat, um, Amy is over on the West Coast. It's only 2.45 over there. So she is not having one quite yet, but everyone is saying it is looking delicious. Oh my gosh. Yes. And it tastes look, look amazing. How, and look how pretty it is. And I honestly, I love the bits and pieces. If you wanted, you can um, muddle it much further than this. But to me, it just looks so pretty. And when you do sip and you get some of the bits and pieces within your mouth, it's fabulous. They just sort of like melt away and they add extra tang because, you know, raspberries have that tang that they bring to the flavor node. Um, and I think you're really, really going to enjoy it. So here is to um, good health, delicious beverages and RDs because we flipping rock the Casbah. Am I right? <laughs> Cheers. I will cheers to that. Absolutely. And then Lauren is saying last day of high school over here. I'm, I'm assuming last day of high school for your kids. You <laughs> definitely deserve a drink. So absolutely. And everyone is saying cheers. So cheers, y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and I just want to say there were a few comments. Joy, we sent these lemon squeezers in everyone's boxes. And so they can make this mojito with their lemon squeezers. I hope y'all enjoyed the boxes. It came with a lot of really fun stuff. We had fun putting them together and picking up everything, picking up, picking out everything to go in the boxes. Um, and we are going to put the, the link in the chat. If you didn't receive one yet, but you signed up for it, it may still be in the mail. So just keep your eyes peeled for the next couple of days. But if you didn't sign up for a box, you can get the link in chat right now. We're gonna put it in, in the next few couple seconds here and you can sign up. So you can get your own little lemon squeezer and all these recipes. And um, there was like a cute little yellow Turkish towel in there. So really fun summery stuff just to kick off summer, make some delicious, healthy recipes and like, celebrate the summer. So yeah, I'm so glad y'all enjoyed them. That's so great. Well, I'm excited. If you guys end up making the cocktail, you have to take a picture and you have to tag me on social so I can yes. get a big smile. All yeah. right. Deal? This, this is amazing. Y'all yeah. have to make this for sure. Deal. Okay. Definitely okay, deal. We are <laughs> moving on to our next recipe. So okay. this, this recipe I'm doing specifically for the 4th of July. So let me show you what it looks like. So I just made one when we were getting ready. 
I'm calling it my sweetened ricotta cream and berry parfait, but of course I did it in a red, white, and blue theme um, so that it's gonna be perfect for the upcoming holiday. We can, also so call, it, we can call it a patriotic par parfait it's too. It's like a little like mini personal trifle. It is so cute. And it's That's so cute. Best. Okay, I'm so excited. You can see it's large. So you do want to have, you know, a large enough glass or what you could do is you could make two minis. So here's how we're gonna make the cream. This is, it feels silly even calling it a recipe because it is so ridiculously easy, but I'm telling you it's gonna be a game changer and you're gonna, you're gonna use this as a spread for toast as well. So here I have a half a cup of part skim ricotta cheese. That's all this is. I just took it out of a large container that's in my refrigerator and I'm adding in, hold on, two teaspoons. I have almond milk here, but you can use whatever milk you want. And you guys are probably thinking like two teaspoons of milk. I mean, it's a splash, but I wanted to give you an, an absolute measurement. So it's just two teaspoons. I don't want you putting more in than that because I don't want the ricotta cheese to get too loose and thin, but I, you do need to um, thin it out a little bit. And I felt like two teaspoons was the perfect amount. And now we're going to put in a teaspoon. So I'm using the confectioner's sugar, the, the swerve replacement, um, because I want like a finer sugar to sort of just blend right in seamlessly with the ricotta. But I tried it with the regular granulated swerve sugar replacement as well, and it worked beautifully. So either okay. one will work. That's a great tip, Joy. Like if y'all are wondering, like when should I use granular versus confectioners? Like anytime you want something with like a really nice smooth consistency, confectioners, confectioners is kind of like the go-to. So like this cream, icings, frostings, glazes, even in beverages, like you can use either, but sometimes, especially if it's a cold drink, the confectioners will like blend a little bit easier. So it just depends on the application, but a lot of times they're interchangeable. So yeah, hope that helps. Okay, so now, you're gonna see that I failed miserably because I forgot to get my vanilla extract. Stay right there. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and then Lauren, it looks like, so you make some ricotta cream as well with a little lemon zest. Oh, that sounds so good. Like a little bright citrusy. I feel like the acid of the citrus with like the creaminess of ricotta. That sounds amazing. And Joy, I love your idea to put this on toast. I didn't even think of that. But like a healthy breakfast toast with a little bit of protein from the ricotta, that's perfect. And, and obviously you get the calcium, but, but you can also doctor right. it up with any kind of fruit on top as well. So like instead of a peanut butter spread with fresh fruit slices on top of toast, you could do exactly the sweet ricotta, which is so delicious. So with the vanilla, it's really like you're the boss of your sauce, right? I always say that. You could put a half a teaspoon or a full teaspoon in here. So this is the sort of thing like we talked about you know, starting with one teaspoon of the swerve in the mojito, I would start with half a teaspoon of the vanilla. I like things very vanilla forward, so I probably would do the full teaspoon, but start with a half and then you can do some more and you'll see. I want, I want you to see the consistency. Oh yeah, that's like very nice and whipped looking. Mine's like a little liquidy. I maybe added too much milk, Joy. Um, this is so, why you're the expert. <laughs> the, other, the other thing is, is be sure that you drain off the water from your part skim ricotta before you take it out of the container. So maybe, Amy, that's what happened. That, I didn't do that. Yep, that, that may have been it. Yeah. So, yeah, so let me show you what it looks like. So it, it's, it's definitely stiff, but it's looser than straight part skim ricotta. So okay. Okay. now I'm going to take... So move this over to the side. I mean, you guys know what comes next. So here I have, we're going for that blue color. So I had to take advantage of blackberries. Oh my gosh, right now they are so plump. They're like genetically engineered blackberries. Look at them. <laughs> they're so huge and they're so delicious. And so I'm mixing them with blueberries. It's a quarter cup of each. Again, if you have a smaller ramekin, you could make mini ones of these, but it's all about the layers of color. And so now, I take my sweetened ricotta and you spoon it on because you want to get it evenly for that white layer around the side. And, and you might have to like manually shift it a little bit so you get it there. And it's okay, a Joy, I just want to tell you, we have some really amazing RDs in the audience right now. So 
Amy is saying how she loves recommending ricotta as an alternative protein source source for her clients, which is such a great idea. And then Jenna, thank you for the recommendation. She's like, just add more powdered swerve. I'm like, duh, of course I can do that. So yes, we have some really awesome RDs in uh-huh. here. Of course yeah. we do. Of course we do. Yeah. Are there any unawesome RDs? I don't think so. It's true. Yeah. So Lindsay is saying it's, it's like an alternative to whipped cream, which is really great because we know whipped cream is like pure saturated fat. So this is like a nice, you know, alternative to that. But, but when you guys taste it, I think that's the feeling that you're going to get. It really does remind me of, you know, like when you take the can and you, you know, squirt it right into your mouth. It's so um, good. That's, that's oh my God. Sometimes in my house, like it, it does give you that indulgent whipped cream feel. Um, it's really, really delicious. And there's, I'm going to get a spoon so I, I can dig into this. Um, I will say like the combination of the vanilla and the swerve and any sort of like cream, whether it's like cream cheese or like whipped cream or or something like this, like, Mm. I don't know what's going on, but like, it is good. Like it always just is so delicious. Uh, It's, it's yeah, this is awesome. You guys definitely have to make this. So is anybody making this right now? I think we had a few making it. I don't, I don't, let me see. Um, I don't see anybody with their cameras on making it, but I know we definitely have some people that are baking along. So would love to hear what y'all are thinking. How are you liking everything? If you're baking along, let us know. Um, also, does yeah. anybody have any like other questions? You know, again, like this is your time. Do you have any questions about um, using Swerve for various baking or cooking um, capabilities? Or do you have any questions just like RD chat? Um, any specific questions for me? Is anybody struggling with something or wanting to get tips or suggestions? For sure. Let us know if y'all have any questions in the chat. And uh, Joy, I feel like you kind of alluded to this before, but you were telling us how, you know, with the pandemic, it's like all of a sudden you and Ian are like the experts in TV production. But like, I'm curious, has the pandemic kind of changed anything in how like you approach your business or like day to day? I know obviously you're shooting from home now, but I'm like really curious to hear about like your personal journey with all that. Um, I, I'm, and I'm, yeah, the answer to that is like definitely yes, a lot has changed. And I am betting a lot of the RDs and, and please let me know are probably experience, experiencing the same thing. So I think that prior to COVID, like we have a huge audience. So many people are either health fanatics or aspire to be healthy. When COVID hit, all of the people that did not fall into those population pockets, suddenly they aspire to be healthy as well. So I think that Mm -hmm. our camp, our audience grew exponentially. Like even, even for me on Instagram and social media platforms, like people were coming out of the woodworks and, you know, and everybody wanted to learn how to cook. Everybody was embracing yeah. their kitchen and their slow cookers and their air fryers and, and not the typical audience. It was people who had never been interested in things like that before. So that would be the first thing. Um, the second thing from my standpoint is because virtual became our best friend, it made it so much easier for me to deliver messages and television segments globally without having to leave my house. So there were so many things in the past that I would say no to because like, oh, to travel all the way to Spain um, or even Canada and have to go through customs, I would lose two days just to do one television spot. So like, it wasn't really, it, it was very difficult for me, especially like, you know, with having other work obligations and my kids, et cetera. So now, oh my gosh, there was a week I did 35 television spots in one week because what? I came That's amazing. from one place to another, to another, to another, without having to go through customs, without having to have the commute, without having to, to leave my home, without having to get my makeup done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but so like, you, guys, you guys know what I mean. So I think that, you know, from a television stance, there's probably a lot of opportunity for you all and for people that are looking to get into television and who have never done it before, um, now is a really good time to start pitching local TV. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, stations that are in your area, like they don't have to have huge followings because they'll help you get your sea legs. They also help you to build a portfolio. So then you have these videos and you could then go and use them 
um, to then pitch some of the bigger national shows. You know, and for me, oh my gosh, being able to do the West Coast without having to have the six hour flight and the time change and the back and forth was just, it was brilliant. So I, I count my blessings because there, were, there was a lot of silver linings for me from the work perspective, you know, right. bigger audience, penetrating more people with a wealth of health, being able to deliver messaging to, you know, 10 times the amount of people that I normally would have because there wasn't travel involved and people are getting so savvy and um, confident with all of the different ways to do it virtually. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I um, that's such a great point. Like, it's almost like, obviously, there were a lot of downsides, but it almost presented a lot of opportunities, especially for you. But even in the nutrition space, I mean, it's like all of a sudden, people, it was a little bit of a wake up call to like, okay, our health is super important. You know, we want to make sure we're taking care of ourselves as much as possible. And um, yeah, I think that's such a great point, Joy. And um, we do have a question in the chat from Bonnie, who's asking, how did you get started in the television business? Um, can I tell you, it was completely by accident. So here's how it <laughs> went. I, it's like truly, I have always had a passion for health. You know, I was making great big messes in my mom's kitchen from, I would say like fifth grade on, like always drawn to food and creating. I also loved chemistry, which makes sense. You know, loved being mm -hmm. in a lab and a kitchen was my laboratory away from science. Um, so what happened was I went undergrad for kinesiology and biochem, thought I was going to be a pediatrician. I was also a competitive gymnast. So I loved the sports aspect and the food aspect, but never had, you know, these big goals of becoming a nutritionist or a, like a food expert. And so cooking was really more of a hobby for me, but I was definitely health focused. And so when I graduated with my undergraduate degree and I was going to go on and take the MCATs and do all of that for med school, I took a sabbatical and I wound up going to NYU and I got a graduate degree in clinical nutrition. And really at the time still thought that was a stepping stone. I was just going to do that. I needed a break from medical school and then I was going to go back. But like one of those times, you know, um, serendipitous times when the light bulb went off, I was in my first class and I thought, oh my goodness, like I love this. So I didn't really find the field. The field found me. And I like, thank God every single day. I just felt like, I, I think it was Nutrition 101, um, but it was one of those moments, you know, I love food. I have the gift of gab. I have a passion for health. I love like talking and working with people. So like all of the boxes sort of, you know, met those check marks. And so yeah. when I graduated, I never wanted to be on television. Like it wasn't even a small thought. I ended up going into clinical. So the whole beginning of my career path, my trajectory was all academics. So yeah, I was a clinical dietitian for the longest time, right? A long time. And Amy, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I was first, I was the um, clinical dietitian at Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City for the neurosurgical service. So I did the polar opposite of what I do now. I did two feeds <laughs> and TPN. I worked with very, very ill patients. Mm -hmm. And then I was the um, director of nutrition and fitness for pediatric cardiology. And there I did two different jobs. I did inpatient with very, very sick folks. I worked in the um, cardiothoracic uh, pediatric transplant unit as well. But I also wrote a grant to go out in the areas that were at high risk for heart disease, diabetes, obesity, at the time, because that was Mount Sinai Medical Center, that was Harlem and East Harlem, and teach kindergarten through 12th grade all about eating well and exercising and sort of like breaking the chain. Yeah, and I, got, I got the grant money. And so half of my job, I was split. I was in the hospital and I worked in clinic um, in East Harlem and Harlem. And um, I was like literally the health teacher. You know, I taught all the different kids. And I, I kind of felt like I was the mayor of Harlem because, you know, here was this like vanilla ponytailed girl, um, <laughs> very, very white in a very diverse community. And yeah. I knew everyone. I oh, knew I all of the teachers, all of the faculty, all of the kids, I knew all of their parents and like my Spanish was getting better and better. And I just, I felt so comfortable and at home in that community. And to this day, it's like one of my most rewarding jobs I've ever, ever had. And I so bet. 
had a TV happen. So while I was doing all of these jobs and I taught anatomy and physiology and sports nutrition at um, this new NYU School of Continuing Ed, um, hopping all around town, um, having babies at the time and absolutely loving it, I loved to write. And I joined every single committee. I was on the Heart Association Committee, the Cancer Society Committee, um, doing all sorts of like freebie lectures, volunteering for anything and anything only because I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. There wasn't like, you know, this special formula or like mission to network because I wanted to do X, Y, and Z. It was very, very organic. But I wound up getting my first book deal. I was doing a lot of articles, first free articles. Then I started getting paid articles with a lot of the glossy um, women's magazines. Uh -huh. And when I got my first book deal, remember there was the dummy series and the idiot series. Um, I was an idiot writer. So I wrote the complete idiot's guide to total nutrition. And it was a time where people were starting to take nutrition and food seriously and view it much more than just, you know, lowering your calories to lose weight. They were now knowing that certain foods eaten in the right amounts with the right combinations could lower cholesterol, could manage blood pressure, could boost energy and strengthen your bones and, you know, just make you feel more comfortable in your skin. And so it was one of these like in the right place at the right time in the right field with the right knowledge base, the book started doing really well and it landed on the desks of a lot of producers. And the very first producer that called me was from The View. And, you know, like I told you, I had no aspirations to do television and I nearly vomited on my food display <laughs> the first segment I ever did. And like, I've told this story before, guys, like I can vividly remember that. My heart was racing a million miles a minute. <laughs> So terrified, terrified. Like, I can't believe I didn't pass out. It was like an out-of-body experience. That's but um, I didn't throw up, and I made it through. Right. And then he called me again and again and again and again. And, like, eventually, like anything else, you get your sea legs. And a few things I will tell you guys, because there's probably people here that already do television. And so you're going to nod, and you're just going to sort of relate to me when I give throughout these tips. And others that want to get into television, and um, these tips will go a long way. <clears throat> the first thing I will tell you is less is more. That very first time that I was on television, and I would say like five, 10 times after that, I would prepare 30 pages of notes. 30 pages of notes. And of course, you know, you only get to a couple of minutes on television, and that's yeah. it. So less is always more. Think about what you want to say, three really important points, and um, a lot of chatter around those three points, because otherwise you try to shove 10 pounds of news into a one pound bag, and you know all of your information just gets lost over the viewer's heads. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is um, every segment is an adventure, and you got to roll with the punches. I have fallen on my butt on national television off of my high heels two times. That's oh. like splat right off of my high heels. 14 million people watching me. I mean, oh you can imagine. And I say that to make you guys feel better because whatever goes south in your world, it's never gonna be as bad as that. And honestly, I just like jumped up and started laughing. And it's NBC actually, um, being like super protective over their talent. They slowed it down. They put chariots of fire music behind <laughs> it and they put it on a loop over and over again at the holiday party. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Oh my so gosh. It was, it, it ended up to be like hilarious. So like, <laughs> I can just tell you, roll with the punches, know that, you know, nothing is ever going to go perfect. But the good news is that the viewers don't know what was prepared and what you had planned, and they only know what they see. So if a host takes you in a wild card direction, just have fun with it. Just go with it. And another thing I'll tell you is if you don't know the answer to something, that is totally okay. Because we yeah. are so smart and we know so much that it is so much better to say, I don't know, but I'll find out and I'll shoot it out on social media after the spot is over, then to make something up. 
yeah. and say it as if it's the holy grail. Because if you are wrong, that will be archived forever and forever and forever. And again, like we're only human. Like it is okay right. to say, I don't know, but you know what? That's a really good question. And I'll get back to you. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. I love your journey. I love how it was just like so organic and you were just literally doing what you loved and people could see that and they were drawn to it. So I think that's such a great story. Um, and we do have a few more questions in the chat. So I'm going to go to those and everybody just a reminder, we're always happy to send out samples, coupons, whatever you need for your patients and clients. I saw we had a few questions about that. Just email me at swervesuite.com. Um, I'm sorry amy at swearsweet.com and we'll get you all fixed up. So don't ever hesitate if you need um, samples or coupons. Um, so another great question we, we had, Joy, this one was about erythritol specifically. So someone was asking, how is erythritol, you know, better tolerated than other sugar alcohols? And that kind of comes down to its molecular size. So, you know, there are several different sugar alcohols out there. You've got maltitol, sorbitol, erythritol, xylitol, and they all have different molecular sizes. And erythritol has a very small molecular size. So because of that, it's able to pass through the GI system and just be eliminated in the urine very quickly. Whereas those other sugar alcohols kind of like hang out in your GI system, maybe cause some gas, some bloating, maybe pull a little bit of fluid into the colon. And so not like the sexiest topic, but that's truly, you know, how erythritol doesn't cause those other GI issues that is kind of, kind of those other ones are known for. So, you know, super important to differentiate because I think we're taught in school, like, oh, these can be a good option, but be wary of them. But, you know, erythritol really is the best of the bunch and a really great solution for a lot of people who still want to have the experience of a dessert, but they, they don't, you know, want all the sugar to go along with it. So great question. And then Joy, this one is for you. So this is fun. Um, a couple ladies were asking if they do some media segments in their kitchen and, and one of them is remodeling. I know you just worked on your house as well. What are some good ways that you can kind of like position your kitchen or even if you're not like remodeling, what are some like tips to kind of make your kitchen like a media friendly zone? Okay, and that's a really great question. See, this, mm -hmm. this, is, this is so cool. Like where else do we get to rap about this? Um, so, you know, you can test out different areas within your kitchen and angles to determine which one you think um, looks the best. So I would, I would set up like a tripod with your, if you're doing it on your iPhone, I find also that I would way prefer to have a smaller little screen and use my iPhone camera because it's much sharper than using my computer camera. So that's like, you know, a little advice for you guys. I always, when I do the Today Show, I'm always doing it on my iPhone camera. Another thing I'm gonna tell you, we'll get back to the positioning. Well, actually, let me stay on the positioning. I, I have tried many different angles and I do many different angles. So depending upon like right now it's daylight outside. So I'm faced back like this, but I'm gonna, um, I might mucky things up over here, but when I first did it, I was over at that counter and then behind me, I'm going to, I'm going to flip this around for you. It's a little mess. It's a little messy though. See, the good news also is that you don't have to clean whatever area you're not showing. But so what, what would happen is that would be behind me and it wasn't as visually appealing as having like this big open space over here. When I'm on the stove over there, um, I position the cameras on this angle so that you can see that way and you still get this wide open space. So the bottom line is there are different ways that you could zhuzh up your kitchen. And what you can also do is you can fake um, a section so you can have like a stack of beautiful skillets or you can have maybe some nice cutting boards um, so that it almost looks like you have this perfectly tailored kitchen when in fact it looks nothing like that because all you're worried about is what's showing on the screen. So that would be the first thing. And I I jump around. I have like, I, I have a double oven over there. I have 
um, an oven underneath here. So because of that, depending upon what I'm making, you'll see lots of different angles. Tomorrow morning on the show, I'm actually going to be cooking outside live. Um, so that should oh. be a little bit interesting. Yeah. Um, and if it's wow. really sunny, that's another, like today, I didn't want to go out there because of the sun. So hopefully, because it's the morning, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to, um, you know, sort of shoot prior to the full blast sun, but we'll figure out the angles with the control room and it'll be okay. So that would be my first thing. The second, that, that's on the positioning. The second thing is when you have your camera on the tripod, again, I'm going back to, I would hugely recommend the best camera that you have. So if that's on an, a new iPad that you just got or your iPhone or a Samsung, like whatever kind of phone you have, it's normally better than even the new computers. Now, when you do Zoom, it's great because you want the full screen because you want to be able to see everything that's around you. But if you, if you can feel comfortable with just a tiny little screen, I would hugely recommend that because you're going to look better on the other end on everybody's big televisions. Um, in terms of ear, earbuds, ear pods, um, I have an external um, audio mic that I use for one of the hours, but like... Hoda and Jenna like me to just stick my ear pods in. So most people I think are gonna ask you for the ear pods and you will hear them much more clearly and they will be able to hear you more clearly because there's a mic in them that will get picked up and it won't sound like you're in a tunnel. Like, when, like right now we're just talking to the computer and it's a little more um, amplified versus being crisp. So that's the second thing. And the third thing I will tell you is ring lights are so, so important because they will just brighten you up. So I've tried a lot of different ring lights and now I'm distracted because Tara has the cutest little baby right over there with Brian. Oh, um, <gasps> look at my goodness. Oh my goodness. You guys, I need to tell you, Tara way, way back in the day when she was on her rock star journey was an intern for me and we have remained close friends ever since and I have gotten such joy watching her grow and flourish her family and hi Brian her awesome husband Brian and um she's now out there doing television and media and like just kicking butt versus falling on her butt like me um <laughs> So, um, so back to ring lights for a minute, I will tell you that um, out of all of the lights that I have, so the small ring light, I'll show you this guy, this is inexpensive, and um, this is really just a filler for me. This one, if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, is better. So this is like a big one, you see? Oh, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big one. And they're all, they all go up and down and they all also have, oh, this one doesn't. The other one has an, a little holder for your phone, which is great. And then, that's what I'm using right now. We, we were like, okay, let's get a, get, let's get one for Swerve. And so I have a ring light with the, with the phone holder in the middle and it's great. It's great. Yeah. So we have a couple of tripods like that. Um, and I'll tell you the reason for that in one minute, but just to finish off on the lighting, the best light, but this is, this will be an expense. The best light is something called TML and it stands for the makeup light. So this is like inside information. And I found this by accident. It's supposed to be for doing your makeup. And I'm going to show it to you. It's supposed to be for doing your makeup, but it gives the, I don't never use it for my makeup. It gives the absolute best light for TV. So here it is, but it's not cheap. You see it? Oh, wow. So it yeah. is like a light projecting box, basically. It, and it wow. has a couple of different settings, just like just like all of the other ones, it has, um, you know, warm, it has bright, it has less bright. So you could sort of adjust um, as you take, you could take some shots or video and see like what you like best. Yeah. I just, I put mine on. I think it's too, you could see I'm a little bit too bright today, but if I could reach over and I could show you what the warm setting looked like, it would look much better like than, than it does right now. I'm looking a little Casper the Friendly Ghost. You look great, Joy. And everyone is loving you in the chat right now. Uh, Ashley said, Joy, you're seriously awesome. Sarah said, this is so fun. Amy said, this is so fun. Love feeling and knowing that you're a real person um, <laughs> versus like a big time famous person, which is so true. Like 
you were just like this warm, just very down to earth person. Like, I love that you could laugh when you fell on national television. Like, it just makes you that much more relatable, you know? Yeah. So, so and you know what? to spend time with you. And I'll tell you, like, I, I um, give a lot of that credit to my parents. My parents, uh, like, bought me up to roll with the punches, to, like, laugh at all of your mistakes. One thing my dad always says is, every failure is the beginning of a new success. And I always think about that, you know, every time, no matter like what you stumble and, or, or like full on fail at, you now have an opportunity to thrive at something else or to think smarter and sharper about um, the way you handled whatever didn't work out. Right. Um, yeah. And what, one more thing I'm going to tell you guys, which is a great tip for television is that we set up two cameras. So I'll have a tripod on the side and then I have my front camera and most TV broadcast stations will be able to have the control room call you in with two different cameras. So what they're then able to do is on their end, they have like you on a screen on the side with my food close-ups and then they'll be able to have me forward talking to the camera and they can decide when they want to flip-flop, flip-flop, flip-flop which is okay. really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a great tip. And then we do have another question, quick tip about kitchen. Um, so would a solid plain white counter be better or something with marbling in it for video? Lauren is asking this. Uh, so I've always had, it's a very good question and I'm gonna give you my opinion. I've always had marbling. And when we redid the kitchen, I specifically went for crisp white. I have some veining throughout. Let's see if you could see this. Um, you see, I have like light veining throughout, um, but for the most part, it's crisp white. And I did the same thing with my counters. Um, for me, the white is definitely the way to go because then you could put color on it and allow it to pop. Right. But um, if it's very busy underneath, you, you sort of, you know, you're, you're, you're working against noise. That's and, awesome. okay. and also, let me just say, like, for people, you, this doesn't mean you have to redo your counters. So, like, if people <laughs> have marbly, veiny counters right now, here's what you do. You just take, I'm going to show you something. I love all these behind-the-scenes tips. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> you buy, like, a really big piece of cutting board or wood yep. and then you put it down and then you have like a nice clean palette. Yeah. You could probably use just like white poster board too, right? Like in a pinch. Absolutely. You just have to make sure that, you know, you can't see the outskirts of it from right. the frame of your video. Okay. That's wow. Enough. That's so so, but you're right about that. And you can actually order those, those flexible, inexpensive backdrops for food styling and stuff on off Amazon. I know it's amazing what is available these days. That is awesome. Um, and then Sarah just said they also sell marble looking high end contact paper. So if you oh, just wanted to do a quick little makeover. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. That's so yes, we've gotten like so many great questions about like kitchens and stuff. Um, so I feel like we are coming close on time. I want to respect our time, you know, about an hour. So we're coming up on an hour. And my favorite question to ask, um, you know, I always love to hear what is everyone's favorite part of being an RD? So would love to hear from the chat from all of you. What's your favorite part about being an RD? And then Joy, please let us know what is your favorite part about being a dietitian? That's so easy, helping people. I, I just feel like we have the best job in the world. Um, we get to enable people to elevate basically every single aspect of their life mm -hmm. by just tweaking what's on their plate. That's it. It's so simple. People eat several times a day, um, sometimes a bazillion times a day. And just by showing them the right foods and the right combinations, they could have more energy. They can live longer and stronger. They could feel more comfortable in their skin. They could lower their cholesterol, their blood sugars, their blood pressure. There's nothing more rewarding to me than to walk down the street and to have somebody walk over to me and say, you know, I finally can walk into my closet and I don't have, you know, my fat clothes and my skinny clothes and I could pick whatever I feel like putting on yeah. and feel really good about it. Or I had the other day, somebody walked up to me and said, oh my goodness, my potato and steak loving guy who absolutely hates vegetables 
cannot get enough of your charred broccoli. Like what? Love it. You yeah. totally can burn it. Me, you know, I mean, I just, I, you guys know, like pinch us. Yeah. Like how did we get so lucky to be in a field that every single day we are helping countless people live their best lives? Yeah. And everyone is agreeing with you in the chat, <clears throat> you know, being able to help people and just feel that gratitude from them is, is so rewarding. And I feel like it's, it's such a special and, you know, unique role to have to, to be able to do all that. So yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we have some awesome dietitians in here. We have some preceptors. So helping young dietitians or future dietitians on their path, um, you know, being, getting to be the person that hears a person, like actually listening to someone and helping them improve their relationship with food is just huge. You know what, um, Amy, you know. Like another thing I'll tell you, I think one of the biggest learning lessons that um, I have taken away throughout my journey from when I first started in clinical and like all the way through now in media is um, we need to listen more than we advise. You know, nothing is a one size fits all plan. Um, what works for one person or one group of people will not necessarily work for another. So, you know, in a sense, we have all of this awesome textbook knowledge, but at the end of the day, trust your gut and be flexible and always evolve. I'm always learning. I'm always listening to people. And sometimes like science is not what's going to help people get to the, a person, get to the finish line. It's about being creative. Um, yeah. and flexible and realistic and manageable. And all of these small changes add up um, mm -hmm. in a gigantic way. Yeah, I totally agree. And like a lot of people are saying that in the chat as well, is like helping people have a healthier relationship with food and like be more confident around food. I feel like that's such a huge part of it. And it's exactly like you're saying, like a lot of that, you know, people know what to do, but it's, it's lending that ear and listening and, you know, just really being there for people. So I absolutely agree. And it sounds like a lot of people in the chat do as well. We even have some people in long-term care, which is a, you know, really great to, to brighten up those people's days. So absolutely, Stephanie, that's awesome. Amy says, um, like, likes to say that she's street smart versus textbook smart when it comes to food shopping, making changes. It's so true. Like a lot That's of people just, mind. It's like, how can we implement it? You know? Yep. You know, don't you, don't just sometimes feel like food, a food shrink? <laughs> like, yes. I always say, you know, like 50% is like attitude. And if you have a kind of attitude, if people have an enduring and significant reason for wanting to be healthy, you are more than halfway there. It's not rocket science, you know, mm -hmm. it's just making better choices every single day. It's not about being perfect. And Lord knows we're not perfect. I mean, could any of us give up chocolate and boo? No, absolutely not. Bad. But I, I can I, give up I, my pro boys. <laughs> exactly. And I think like it's a really nice time to be a dietitian too, because we're really blending the science with um, having a peaceful relationship with food and just showing people that, again, it's not a one size fits all plan and, you know, being forgiving and being kind to yourself and just doing the best that you can do. And guess what? Like that's good enough. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I love that. I don't think we could have ended on a better topic. Um, Joy, again, thank you so much for coming on tonight. It has just been a blast. I hope everyone that you all have had a wonderful time. Um, just a reminder, if you want samples, coupons, if you want to receive a box, if you haven't already, We'll put that information in the chat here. You can always email amy at swervesuite.com. I'm always happy to chat with anybody, answer any questions you may have, send some samples to your patients, all of that fun stuff. We're always here for you as a resource. And then we would also love to hear from you. Do you want us to keep doing these Zooms? Should we try to do more in-person things? What other ways can we support you? Is it more resources? You know, we just want to be here for you guys and um, hear from what, you know, what's going to be helpful for you and your practice. And um, again, Joy, thank you so much. We're going to be doing more with you this year. So everyone stay tuned. Let us know what else you would like to hear from Joy because, you know, we have a lot of fun things um, on the horizon and we want to make sure we're, we're helping everybody out the way, the, the best way that we can. And I just want to say thank you to everybody too. This was fun. 
This was yeah. really cool. It felt intimate, um, casual. We had a cocktail. <laughs> we got to gab a bunch. Um, and Amy, thank you and Swerve for all that you do to help you know the world be a healthier place. And if any of you guys have any questions for me ever, you could always DM me. Um, we try to read every single message that comes in on social media always. Um, that's awesome. And again, I'm sure you get a lot, so that says a lot. <laughs> All right, guys, again, so rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. I hope y'all have a wonderful Thursday. Thank you, Joy, again. You guys. Bye. Bye. -bye. All right.